Hi there, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ashley Baylor with a check of your latest forecast. Well, clearly all eyes on Hurricane Florence. This has continued to gain strength. Winds are now up to 85 miles per hour as it continues on a westerly track towards the U.S. Now, I will say we're also watching Tropical Storm Isaac and now Hurricane Helene. These are not expected to bother us in the U.S., but we always have to keep one eye on the situation. So let's put a track on Florence for you. Here we go. Over the next 24 hours, this could potentially strengthen into a major Category 3 hurricane with winds picking up to 120 miles per hour. So that's some rapid intensification here. Let's take you out to Tuesday. That's when it could become a Category 4 hurricane with winds sustained at 145 miles per hour. Even Wednesday, winds picking up to 150 miles per hour as it makes its approach to the East Coast. Let's take you out to Thursday where you can see it is expected to make landfall somewhere near Wilmington, North Carolina by Thursday afternoon with winds at 140 miles per hour. Now it's been a while since we've actually seen a major hurricane Hurricane make landfall in North Carolina. I think it was back in 1996 with Hurricane Fran. So it's been quite a few years since we've had a major hurricane make landfall uh, in North Carolina or even South Carolina. It was back in 1989 with Hurricane Hugo. So watch as Florence moves on shore. It is expected to lose some energy, clearly, with the friction of the land. But as it moves towards the Raleigh-Durham area, I do wonder if it could actually maintain hurricane strength. That would mean winds at or above 74 miles per hour. So we'll certainly be watching that situation. But once we get into Friday, that's when it does put Hampton Roads and Northeast North Carolina in the cone of uncertainty. We're not in the cone of uncertainty when it comes to the initial landfall. There was a little bit of confusion about that earlier. Now let's take a look at our spaghetti models here uh, where you can see that they stay pretty consistent from now all the way through Thursday. And the more consistency we see, the more it actually does build confidence in the forecast. So consistency, very, very key here. However, as we look at the Canadian and the American model, this turquoise line here, you can see both of those models actually have Florence not making landfall at all, just kind of meandering off the coast. And I will say that would not be an ideal situation for us. That would actually be a worst case scenario for us. Even though we do not want to see a major hurricane make landfall anywhere along the East Coast, the fact that it would make landfall as far south as Wilmington would be a slightly better situation for us. Now, What's interesting is as I was on during our earlier show, I actually did watch the American model update right on air. So watch as both of them now actually do show landfall occurring somewhere along the North Carolina coastline, even from southern parts of the Outer Banks all the way to Wilmington, North Carolina. So again, slight, slight improvement in the forecast there. I really want to emphasize slight. But you can see how much bigger uh, in sheer size and intensity the American model does keep Florence, even as we go through the upcoming weekend. So this is something we have to continue to watch very closely and lay out all possibilities, anything from a landfall in North Carolina to landfall in South Carolina to landfall even closer to our neck of the woods up towards Northeast North Carolina. But we also have to keep in mind that just meandering off the coast, that's still well within the realm of possibilities. So what does that mean for us? Let me step off screen just for a second here. And you can see that with the American model, if it does meander off the coast from Thursday into Sunday, that would mean we would see sustained wind speeds around 40 miles per hour in Hampton Roads for several days. It wouldn't just be, you know, overnight or anything like that. It would be sustained wind speeds at that level for days. And then down in North Carolina, we would be contending with wind sustained at 50 miles per hour, if not even higher, closer to the Outer Banks, closer to 60, 70 miles per hour. So you're talking about driving wind that would easily knock down thousands of trees. If you remember with Isabel, Isabel, we didn't get a ton of rain, but because the ground was already saturated, it did didn't take much wind to bring down thousands of trees. So we're going to be watching out for that scenario. And we'd also have to contend with severe, potentially historic flooding just because of the wind direction. If it does meander off the coast, we'd be dealing with likely a northeast wind. And then most of the rain would be across the south side in North Carolina. As far as the European model goes, landfall near Wilmington, North Carolina would still affect us here in Hampton Roads anywhere from Thursday all the way through Monday. But in that case, not as much wind would be expected here. The tidal flooding wouldn't be as bad considering the wind direction would be more out of the south and southeast. Now that will still push some water on shore, so uh, especially down in the Pungo area, uh, the Blackwater area potentially um, near Dolly Corners, those are the areas we might be looking out for. And of course, the most rain in that situation situation would be farther inland. It actually wouldn't be along the coast. Now, as far as landfall probability goes, there's still a high risk. Let's say anywhere from Kitty Hawk through
through Kill Devil Hills and Nags Head, stretching all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina. But you'll notice Hampton Roads, we're still in that moderate risk. So were we out of the woods here? No, we're not whatsoever. We have to continue to monitor every single update that comes out from the National Hurricane Center. So what you can do now, stock up, fill up, and clean up. You can stock up on extra groceries, cases of water, extra batteries. Make sure your car stays filled. I would not let it go below half a tank of gas right now. And you can also fill up your propane tank because if you do lose power, at least you can still grill out. And clean up any summer furniture that you're done using that you're not going to use in fall. Bring that inside right now if you know you're not going to be using your patio furniture furniture and you're a little bit worried about it, that would be the time to bring it in as well. So just doing a little bit of cleanup outside that you might do anyway to just help you out because you don't want to be doing that at the last minute. Now, getting back to our local forecast just for what's going to happen over the next uh, 48 hours here, we are going to see these um, these showers and thunderstorms that we've been dealing with through the afternoon, those are going to move out. Most of Monday is dry, but there could be some spotty showers during the afternoon. Temperatures will be in the upper 80s. And then Tuesday, mostly dry temperatures back in the upper 80s, but a chance for a few showers late, late in the day. Now, we are concerned with a little bit of tidal flooding here. Going into high tide around 945 tonight, uh, the water level is expected to crest at about 4.9 feet, indicating minor tidal flooding. And then we'll see high tide come up again around 1015 tomorrow. The water level is expected to hit right around 4.6 feet, also indicating minor tidal flooding. And the nuisance tidal flooding expected um, Monday night right around 1030 and then again at 11 o'clock Tuesday morning. So if you live in an area that's prone to tidal flooding, that is something you want to be aware of. But of course, right now, our primary focus is going to be on Florence. This is going to be a bit of a bumpy week. I'm going to be posting a blog to wavy.com. I'll be sure, or be sure to check that out just in case you need any finer details on what exactly could we can expect from Florence, but of course we'll keep you updated with every single advisory that comes out from the National Hurricane Center.